Good afternoon, welcome to Run Like Gaming. Um, so I actually recorded these before and then had some trouble with the audio. So I'm kind of doing more so a voiceover. Uh, this is going to be another series that we're doing. Uh, Prince of Persia, uh, The Saints of Time will be the first one that I was playing through. And this is pretty much the videos that I've done up to this point. Which, several of these will be voiced over, mostly because, as I said, the audio was having problems at the time. And I didn't realize that it wasn't actually recording the audio for it. Uh, so pretty much this game itself, if you've ever played the old... they ha It started off with like a Super Nintendo, where you're basically going through and trying to complete things within a certain amount of time. That's kind of... like this is the a newer version of that game. Uh, this particular game, though, the character you play is much more... Um, mobile and able to get around really easily instead of like your strong fighter type that just beats things. Uh, but pretty much the entire story of this one is um, well it starts off here with your father uh, he's the king of your empire of the empire you're part of and you are going to this particular castle and trying to conquer this particular location. And so pretty much where I it starts... I think I felt regret as I gazed I'll upon the destruction we had wrought. Or at least humility at the speed with which a world can be transformed from a good world into a hell. If you think so, you are mistaken. For in that moment I thought of one thing only. The honor and glory I would bring my father by fighting like a warrior in my first battle. So, this initial part is kind of like your tutorial sort of thing for most games. Uh, and this is where you're going to learn the basics of actually playing the game itself. In this case, it's basically showing you you know, how to make like basic jumps and move around and things of that sort. And pretty much during this entire time, there's like this big war going on because you're actually trying to conquer this particular castle here. And as you can see, there's all sorts of different things that are going on. And that's why I mentioned, too, the character himself is very, very mobile, so you can get around really well. Like in this case, you can run around, you know, across the wall itself. And you're going to see a lot more of that pretty shortly as well. I can definitely say though that the AI is kind of bad on here too. That's one of my things that I probably complain about on this game. Like when I fell on the ledge there, the characters on like the your enemies here basically just protect, kind of like pretended you weren't even there. So it's kind of like, yeah. Many men that day sought to win honor and glory on the battlefield that their king might say to them, as Khosro said to Rustam, you are the noblest of my warriors. From the moment my sword tasted blood, I knew this would not be my way. I would win my father's praise, not by killing, but by being the first to find the Maharaja's treasure vault and the wonders within. And so pretty much his objective in all this is basically to get to the vault and see if he can claim a treasure in it, which would be, you know, hopefully bring honor to like to his family and stuff. Uh. 
And mostly I think I was just trying to practice with uh, actually doing parries and stuff. Just kind of get a little bit of practice in with it. As I mentioned, this is all kind of tutorial-ish, even though it doesn't probably look exactly like your typical tutorial. Basically, it's trying to walk you through a lot of your really basic stuff. And I was also breaking everything in hopes that... I know in most games that you play, you can generally find stuff if you're breaking stuff. Like, you know, gold coins or whatever. And I think I came to the conclusion pretty soon that the game itself... These are pretty much just strictly decoration, so it just helps kind of livens up the hallways and rooms and stuff. And this basically walks you through just doing like the wall runs like that. Yeah, I think I just had a little bit of trouble getting up the ladder. There we go. Yeah, I think that's about the time I kind of gave up with actually trying to break everything. I think this is another very good example of the AI. You know, basically until you cross that line there, then for the most part they won't actually even bother you. Again, they act like you don't even exist. As soon as you cross the line, then it's like they recognize you again. And basically, uh, some of the other things that they're going to try to teach you is using the ledges themselves to kind of jump up, jump down. And as I said, it's basically just trying to teach you different, you know, things in the game itself. Though initially the the combat system itself is pretty neat, it does seem to kind of get to be repetitive after a while, like especially during a lot of these earlier monsters. Well, not monsters, but uh, earlier guards and stuff that you fight. A lot of them are pretty much, you know, you hop over them, you attack a couple times, and then you go on to the next one. And that was also another introduction to the actual pulls themselves. Shall I continue my story from here the next time we're interrupted? Because basically you're going to be using those pull things to climb up and jump from pole to pole sometimes. And another thing you'll realize too is I'll that... I'll start the story from here next time. The game's really narrative based. So like, it, this entire story is as if he's actually explaining the story to you. So it'd be like if you're talking to, you know, some particular storyteller, he's trying to explain to you, okay, well this happened, then this happened, then that happened. That also means every time like you die, he goes, well, it didn't quite happen that way. And so he kind of resets it, then it goes back to the previous save point. And there it lay, just out of reach. The Dagger of Time. There was a treasure I could carry with pride as a trophy of our victory. If I could only get there.
and this is pretty much when you start dealing with like traps and stuff. Uh, the game does have quite a bit of like random traps that you kind of have to figure out how to best deal with. Another thing I would probably mention too is wait, that wait, um, wait. that's not how it happened. That's what I was talking about as far as like the narrative goes. But yeah, it seems like he does die fairly easily. Cause I figured that was like a one story jump and drop sort of thing. And he just falls over and dies. Which I think our average person should be able to, you know, fall from one f you know, one floor a floor and a half or so. And I just completely get killed. So I just find that particularly odd, but. In any case, I did the same jump more or less and actually survived it. I kind of botched this jump a few times. And it's pretty much just trying to walk you through actual like going up and down ledges. Pretty much at this point, I was just trying to kind of find out the way to actually get up. I think that's around the time that I came to the conclusion that the hands there actually were kind of in a way that allowed you to actually climb it, so. And 
That was the dagger of time. And pretty much the neat thing about this particular dagger is the I fact had what I came for. It was time to get out. Now. Yeah, and the, the neat thing about this particular dagger is the fact that it allows you to actually reset time. So like in this case where I botched it pretty quickly after you can basically spend some of the sand to reset time and then actually try to redo something. In this particular job I have I had experienced by accident in the Maharaja's treasure room. I now discovered that I could trigger at will. By pressing a switch on the dagger's handle, I could turn back time. Yep, so, like as he mentioned, you can actually activate reversing time, so if, if you get killed at some point, like if you actually make a bad jump or whatever, it pretty much makes it to where you can reset it and try again. Though it is limited to how many you have, but as you kill monsters later, it actually will restore that. So, so it's kind of an interesting mechanic, though. It's definitely a little bit different from a lot of the games that I've played thus far, and that's kind of why I've enjoyed this one a little bit uh, as I played through. Is it does bring in something interesting and different. I guess uh, in the future I probably should turn up the audio on these. I guess the little narrative things. I think they're kind of low right now. And so pretty much, uh, your family uh, was successful in capturing this particular uh, city here, and they basically they're taking like the spoils of war for that, which includes in this case women and some of the treasures that they had there. I pretty much just got bored with watching it. But apparently something bad happens and these monsters and creatures start spawning and stuff like that, so. Yeah, so pretty much from here on, Prince, you're now dealing with the dagger. So from here, we're pretty much dealing with these new monster-like creatures, and they basically uh, have to be killed with the dagger itself to absorb them. Each time I struck them down, they rose to fight again. I soon realized that only by taking into my own dagger the sands that possess them could I liberate them from their monstrous living.
Yeah, so pretty much have to kill him, you basically have to fight him like the other guards. And then afterwards, once they're on the ground, you're supposed to stab with the dagger, and then, therefore, that absorbs them into the dagger. And then it gives you a uh, another ball of sand at the top left there, which is the yellow ones. And those you can actually use to reverse time. So, like, if I chose to right now, I could actually reset it, and then gain all my life back as well. And those things you see there are pretty much like the save points. And then they'll start to reveal things that are going to happen to you in the future. So like what you're seeing right now is not what's happened already, but rather what's going to happen pretty soon. Done. I'll start the story from here next time. You think me mad. I can see it by the look in your eyes. Guys, you think my story is impossible. Perhaps I am mad. Who would not be driven mad by horrors such as I have lived? But I assure you, every word is true. like the water in this game is your way of healing. You can actually drink as many times as you want, so pretty much every so often you'll come across like these little lakes and ponds and water and such. And if you drink at it, it's gonna give you extra health. Wait! And then one thing you learn about this game pretty quickly is there's a lot of parkour. Like, that's pretty much the majority of what you'll end up doing in this particular game. The guest rooms, where my father, all our entourage, and I should have passed the night lay cold and silent. The sands of time had swept through, stealing life and warmth from everything they touched. And I, who unleashed the cataclysm, had been spared. Were there others like me, who yet clung to life, hiding in fear among the ruins? It did not seem so. Hello! Is anyone there? <laughs> Pretty much at this point I was just looking for a way to climb up.
and it's basically one of the next introductions of things. It's pretty much um, that you can actually swing on these little pull things, and then pretty much swing pull to pull to pull. Another thing too, though, uh, you'll notice that it's pretty much like blending a lot of the different things you've learned so far. And as you learn new things, you're gonna have to do those in Stop! conjunction. I won't hurt you. Had I really seen her, or had my senses given way under the burden of horrors too great to bear, and conjured up a phantom? Either way, I could not rest until I had found her again. The combat system is definitely something that I think they could have done a little bit better. That said, it is kind of entertaining the first few times, but it does get a little bit. I soon discovered that when I had collected enough sand, the dagger gained the power to stop time. Not for me, but for the enemy I struck. And so pretty much at this point, um, I will go ahead and end this, uh, we're going to actually end this particular video. Uh, if you watch in the future, there should be several more videos I'll of this. I'll stop the story from here next time. And it's going to, I'm pretty much going to be going through and actually playing uh, all the different levels and stuff in this particular game. Whence came these visions so if you have enjoyed it, thus, I would like definitely watch dreams. for the future ones. Each time I awoke watch feeling well. drained and beaten, and each time... What I had seen came to pass, as if the sands of time were giving me a glimpse into my own future. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching Run Gaming, and you have a good day.